Here I am. Leon C, a.k.a. Morpheus. And you are in the Academy of Wildman today. And I'm going to discuss something with you today that is pretty much fair and balanced. But with it, I'm going to add a little science and I'm going to add some actual real life data to this conversation that we have. So I'm going to dive right into it because I'm not going to waste a lot of time here. I had a conversation with a gentleman that I know of. And I was introducing him to the red pill and had a little discussion about MGTOW and the distortion between logic and emotional thoughts that we were dealing with here in the new generation of womenized, soft, moist individuals who aren't who aren't as sharp as they need to be on their values, on their moralistic views, and definitely just doing what needs to be done for the future. And as the discussion went on, I began to ask this gentleman about what he thinks about the new type of woman today. Yes, there's a new type of woman today. If you want to know my descriptions of how I uh, situate these new individuals, then you need to check out that book that I made for you. It is called 2020 America Rise or Far Hard by Leon C. And I talk about this new transformation. If it's alien to you, that's because you don't pay attention and you're just now listening to this audio. I have about a hundred and some audios talking about these discussions. And I want to make it clear to you and everybody else that are listening right now. Every audio that I have, everything that I have in the subscription are made available for you that have been uploaded. They are all audio. There's no animations. This isn't about entertaining you. This is about lessons. This is about learning. This is about focusing on the truth and the values of existence today. So just because you may see a funny looking thumbnail, just because you may... um be deceived by the description of the outside display that I put up there. Okay. Um, you need to judge how you think because wise men always say, do not judge, do not judge a thing based on its outside appearance. So again, I have to remind you, I am Morpheus. Okay. And only the selective few will comprehend this. Only the selective few is going to be here. Only those who are willing to open up their ears and learn something is usually going to adapt to my lessons. All right. So it's not going to be, at least right now, it's not going to be in the thousands or the hundred thousands, but that's okay. Because I'm all about quality over quantity. I don't need people who's going to be entertained and just want to put down a comment because they're bored and got nothing else to do with their life. I'm only interested in those who are looking for answers, who is looking for advancement and who was looking to disconnect themselves from this dumb, backwards, de-evolved generation that we are in today. So therefore, just because you think it's popping hot and right for you because it's one of the latest audios, you will be dumbing yourself down. Because most and many of my other fiery hot deliverance of wonderful messages that I have available for you, okay, is all the way down there in the other um, earlier versions of the audios that I have uploaded, okay? So they are all effective and all of them will benefit you and what you are willing to achieve or need to achieve to make yourself a better human being. And the reason why I have to say this, because I look at all the views every now and then, not all the time, but every now and then I get a chance to do so. <clears throat> every now and then I get the notifications. Every now and then I'm able to display or to see for myself how many people are looking at or viewing 
certain kinds of audios that I have provided for you out of the Academy of Wildman. And what I notice is the ones that, which are the newest ones is what usually gets the highest view count. But the ones that have been made maybe a few months back or maybe a year ago, they don't get as many views. That just lets me know the type of generation of people that we are dealing with today. It doesn't do anything but expo expose the monkey for what it is. Or I would say the transform, dumbed down, disadvantaged human that we have transformed to be today. Always looking for what's the best next thing. What's the newest thing? What is the hottest? What just came out yesterday? So you lied to yourself. As a matter of fact, you exposed yourself by doing so. And it also helps me as your professor, okay, to actually pat myself on the back as a confirmation that what I talk about is definitely for real. That we escape ourself. We escape our own logic. We escape our own instincts. We don't want to learn anything. We're so stuck on stupid, we're happy to stay there. And we make programs around just that. Any and just about everything that I make has a purpose and a reason behind it. Okay? I didn't give you information, nor have I gave you power for no reason. I'm on a mission to open up minds and to change hearts and to disconnect the wire from the back of your head. However, getting back to this gentleman, this gentle man. In the conversation, when I asked him about women with tattoos, asked him about women who color their hair, who chop their hair off, or, here we go, a woman with a lot of mileage that she's been around. She's had multiple donkey dunk partners in her past life. Okay. In uh, during the conversation, I set him down like I usually do for all of you neos, and I introduced him to my pets that I have in my academy. You all are familiar with them: Ralph the dog and the dodo bird. The three ladies at this particular time, as you know them to be, already made the audio for you. Who was Bewitch, who was Lucy, and who was Karen. They were pretty much quiet. They just sat down, very attentive to listen to what I had to say. They always do anyway. They go nowhere. They stay in the academy to teach you something. But this gentleman was very fond of Ralph the dog and the dodo bird. And... There was a reason why, because they are affiliated. They are one and the same. As a matter of fact, oftentimes you gravitate to that which what you are. I'm going to always say this because it was the most powerful thing that Brother Tom Likas said many years ago. And I'm going to always repeat this over and over and over again. All right. Water reaches its own level. You got me? Water reaches its own level eventually it's going to level out no matter what the storm is no matter what the struggle is no matter where you come from your color your culture your mentality you're going to reach your own level eventually and you're going to be satisfied just there because you're going to be visually visualizing yourself or here we go your standards your standards and one of the most ignorant dumbed down, uneducational, and dilapidated mindsets a man can have is thinking that he is the same as what a woman is. You are two different people all together. You are two different species on the face of the, listen, two different bipedal homo sapiens. By your breed, by your very genetic, you are different. You look at life differently. Your emotions are different. Your expectations out of the land is going to be different. Even the food that you eat. You may agree on a taste of the uh, steak or eggs or maybe even the uh, spaghetti or the tacos or hamburger that you may eat may be just flavorful for the both of you, but it's going to tingle on your senses a little differently and it's going to trigger a certain chemistry within your mind. Okay. 
within your consciousness and within your own biology a little bit differently. Okay? Even if there's a close proximity or you can round it to the nearest number, <laughs> okay, mathematically, it's still going to be different by any digit, by any number. Okay? So, no women cannot play the game the same as men can play the game. It don't work like that. Nature tells us this. This is science. This is facts. Just because we can breathe the same, just because we walk down the sidewalk the same, just because we both can get behind a John Deere tractor and cut our front yard, that doesn't mean that we are the same species. We're just able to do the same thing. Did you get what I said? We're just able, able to do the same thing. That doesn't mean that we are the same because we are able to do the same thing. We are still two different people and we got to respect that. So I asked them, okay, how do you, what do you think about a woman with tattoos? And of course, this uh, beta said, well, I don't mind because I got tattoos myself. Who am I to be unfair and to judge her about her tattoos and I have tattoos myself? On my arms, on my legs, some on my chest. If she got the same, well, who am I to judge her? Okay. Now, if I transfer my red pill mind to a blue pill mind, I would agree with them. When it comes to being equal and fair, that pretty much makes a little bit of sense there. I can comprehend that. All right. We're not stupid. You know, you can't point your finger at someone else if you're doing the same thing. I comprehend. All right. But a beta don't comprehend the ground level that I'm going to get to. I'm going to break that down because I know it's kind of difficult right now to try to figure out what's the differences. But we're going to break it down with science for a minute here. All right. Just bear with me. So, again, I begin to ask him about her past life. How many men that she gave her body up to. And once again. The beta blue pill guy said, well, I don't mind too much because I've had that myself. I've been around the world. I had taste of the finest wine. I donkey dunked in the middle of the night in the back of the car in the restaurant, you know, in my grandma's basement. <laughs> right. I've done all that. So who am I to? Here we go. Here's the words. Who am I to judge? Hold that in your mind to judge her. All right. So as his professor and as your professor, my place in life and in this academy is to tell you something that you probably already know or that you know already and to break it down where you can comprehend. OK. And the one thing that I'm going to give to you is this word called I just said it judge. There's a difference between judge and knowledge. The one thing that you're not doing is particularly judging a person because we are not that type of people to point our finger. Unless you are a moron and unless you have a troublesome life yourself and a lot of people do. So they pretty much try to judge you. As if they are a perfect species or they have no issues of their own. So. This is pretty much irrelevant to the subject and irrelevant for what he was saying. It's not about judging. It's about knowledge. It's about knowing the thing. When you are driving a car, and I'm always going to use car uh, examples here because we are familiar with that. And some of us know something about cars. OK, men do specifically. OK, so when you are when you understanding the car and its performance, when you're going for a race. All right. And you know what this car is capable of. You're not going to say, I'm judging this car's performance. You're going to say, I'm expecting a certain performance from this car. I know what this car can do. I see it on paper and I see it in the uh, the dyno. And I know it because I drive this car. I, uh, 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 I travel in this vehicle, so I know about it. I've raced it before. I know what it's capable of. You're not judging this car. OK, you're not sitting back as if you're in some type of uh, what do you call that on some booth and you got a notepad in your hand and you're trying to judge its performance. That's stupid. That's a uneducated way of thinking and focusing on a certain matter. When you're dealing with a person, you're not sitting back judging them. You are expecting 
and how you expect is with the knowledge of knowing the species which is the science that I'm talking about today. It is the code of life. Science is the code of life. Science and the nature of the thing is also the code of success and understanding what its potential is. And there is always going to be a major difference. Always, when you know the species, when you know the root of its issue. Because when you get two women you, if you get a man and a woman in the room and they both agree on a thing that whether it may be good, whether it may be bad, whether it may taste good or not, there is still going to be a different dynamic with it. They're still going to have a different experience with that particular item. They're going to have a different idea and a different emotional circumference altogether with whatever subject that might be at hand. OK, even though they have agreed on one specific thing, because they are two different, two different species altogether in the human race. That's why they're called the womb man. And he is a man. OK, in this generation that we live in today are the dumbed down, de-evolved, engineered society that we live in today. You are taught that everything is one thing. OK, you're a dummy. And you need to go back to school. OK. No, everything is not one. Nature tells you this. Men are not walking around with twins. You got me? They don't have a 28 day period. You understand? Same as women aren't walking around. They wasn't the one that they wasn't the ones who won World War One and, and World War Two and built the tanks and the bridges. All right. They weren't the ones that was uh, a part of a uh, matriarchal society in the past. That isn't our deception. I'm just bringing that to the fold as far as some kind of a uh, example for you. It wasn't a it wasn't a matriarchal time in the past in the mindset of the the common woman is today. To them, they thought it was a patriarchal. It wasn't patriarchal. It's may the best man win type of thing. It's called natural selection. And survival of the fittest. Natural selection and survival of the fittest is based on whose genes are who is the strongest, who is the fastest, who's the best. So whoever is the strongest, the fastest, the best, and the smartest is generally going to survive. That's nature. That's science. That's nothing but facts. So therefore, men follow suit to what their capabilities was and women did as well. Even though we're not even going to talk about it today because it's pointless to the subject. I'm not talking about men who tried to take control over their wives' lives. I'm not talking about men who didn't want women to vote. That's not what I'm talking about, okay? If you're in your feelings, take your feelings somewhere else because I don't care about them. Okay? Shut your feelings down and act like an adult here in this academy. If you don't got me, you better get me now. All right? But generally... The law, the law of nature was whoever is the fittest fits the top podium, period. So in their escaped mindset, or you can say uh, bird brain mentality, they thought it was a patriarchal idea, but they were wrong. Always is anyway, typically. Uh, I would say on the majority scale, they are. You usually going to be wrong when you're looking at things emotionally anyway. You're usually going to make bad decisions when you're looking at it through a distorted judgmental lens, trying to be better than the next person instead of just outlasting. Let me give you an example. If you're in your feelings, OK, if you just graduated from uh, middle school yesterday, let me break it down to you. I don't have a chalkboard, but if I did, I'd write it for you. OK. When I usually went into my. Uh, my martial arts challenges, OK are the practices that we would have in the dojo. All right. Even if the person was uh, better than you or high ranked of you, or if they were faster than you or stronger, whatever the situation was, when you both got into the mat, the referee or the, uh, the sensei didn't concern themselves about who was better, who wasn't better. The fact was, if you made that other person tap out, you're the victor no matter what. You got what I'm saying? There's no complaining about, oh, this person cheated. This person did. No, 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 no. If they tap out, they tap out. You won. 
All right. If you're going to do good, do good altogether. Just succeed. Get your belt. Uh, graduate, go to the next level and um, have your parents there to uh, to congratulate you. But we have transformed our simple. Uh, what do you call that? Our common sense, which used to be common, but it's not common anymore because we have no instincts. Even have no instincts, you don't have common sense or open mindedness anymore. OK, but we have sold ourselves down the river as a thinking culture, a thinking human race to a dumbed down computerized human race where we go by analogies and we go by emotions and we go by being scared to hurt somebody's feelings. And we want the rookie to win. Even if the rookie don't deserve to win, even if the rookie haven't worked hard as the champion to win, we just want them to win because we're bored of our own uh, 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 our own logic. How about that? We we bored about thinking about the proper way of doing things or the justice of science and nature. So we wanna we wanna manipulate science and nature to benefit our stupidity. How about that? Instead of just abiding by the loyalty of nature and science itself. So over time, instead of accepting the fact that we just naturally have a place that we fit in with nature, we want to defy nature by fitting in places where we don't belong. So therefore, if we at that time versus today get into a martial arts challenge or practice, just because I'm victorious, that doesn't mean I'm going to be able to be the victor. The one who got knocked down is the one to victor because what happened is they'll start saying, well, you know, you're cheated. You're too tall. You're too strong. You're too fast. You had like nine years of practice or 13 years of practice. So you really don't win. The person that fought you is the winner. And they're down. We're going to go ahead and give them a trophy anyway for trying. And we're not going to give you any type of recognition. So what you won? Boo hoo. Too bad. Let's bring the rookie up. But the fact is, the rookie knew the rules before they got onto the mat. When you're wrestling somebody, when the bell rings or when the referee is in front of you, it's game over. What I mean is game over is there's no jumping out of the ring then. You can tap out. You can give them, well, I don't want to do this because this person is beating the hell out of me. <laughs> okay, I can't, uh, I can't see anymore. Blood is dripping down my eyeballs. My ribs hurt. I feel like I'm going to pass out. Okay, I'm going to tap out because my jaw is broken or something like that. You can probably do that for safety reasons. But the fact is, when you get in the ring, you got in the ring with that person. So you need to expect the unexpected and expect the victory or a loss. So nature works like that. Nature works like that. It's the law of the fittest. But because we are blended in our thinking and we are confused because we are confused in nature, we think we are both the same. So this guy says, well, getting back to the story here, the guy said, yeah, I, well, who am I to? Here, here's the word again. Judge her based on my inadequacies. I'm inadequate myself. So why am I going to judge her based on her inadequacies? Right. But let's go a little further than this. All right. I'm going to put this train on the track for you and let's get this knowledge started. OK. The fact is, it does matter regardless. It's going to it's going to affect the man's chemistry and the female's uh, chemistry a lot differently. Just because you both has probably stacked up 200 bodies that you have donkey dunk with a piece, 400 all together. That doesn't mean, OK, that you are both going to be equal for each other. Just because you're walking around with a skull tattoo on your chest and an anchor tattoo on your shoulder and she's walking around with a couple of roses between her breast. OK, and her ex-boyfriends or her sons or doctor's name tattooed all on her arm and a couple of bunnies and cats all down her leg. That don't mean you two are equal. It has a different effect. It's going to be a different dynamic for you versus for her. There is a reason. See, women wear tattoos as a sign to say, I am a rattlesnake or I am poisonous or watch out. Watch out. 
I am not the virtuous girl that you think I am. I'm letting you know by this tattoo. I am displaying the very fact that you are on dangerous territory. That's just like that woman called the Rose on Batman. I think she was called, um, I can't think of what her name was, but I think she was called, I'm just going to say Rose, the, the venomous woman where she had red, she had green skin and red hair. If you look at her body, everything was green and she had plants popping up around her. Tentacles was coming out everywhere. Right? She looked pretty much done up with warning signs to let you know it's nothing but poison over here. Now, when you convey that to the man having plenty of tattoos and um, for him being the warning sign, it's still going to be a different dynamic because he's a man at the end of the day. That doesn't escape that he can be poisonous. I'm not saying that he can't be abusive or be a trouble for her. Okay? I'm not saying that, she, that he is not a broken man. The science and the facts, okay, and the psychology of the man is going to be dynamically and dramatically different than the ladies all together based on history, based on fact, because for, for many years, men have always been that way. Okay? You want to go with the facts? Let's go with the facts. Men have always wore tattoos because it was just a manly thing sometimes. They were the ones who actually made the tattoos versus wearing the tattoos. In their biker days, when they go to the military after getting their hair bust sawed off, right? Or they go to the gym, they want to get a, a uh, eagle tattoo on their chest or something of that nature. Sometimes you see guys who are uh, UFC fighters who have tattoos. That just comes with the territory. Men are capable of that because that's just a manly thing. It wasn't to... Uh, to give a significant sign to the world, don't bother me. It was just a masculine male being a masculine male. That's no different than an ape in the jungle beating on his chest. This is what they do. He's a man. That's not a clear sign that he's been abused or hurt when he was a little boy. It is not. It's not a clear sign that he's in some type of game. It's not enough. Sometimes, just like women, men do dumb things. But the, the in-depth psychology is different than what it will be for the woman because a woman never did that. Women were different in the 1940s, 1930s, and uh, uh, a few years ago, okay, because it really isn't that new. They were different. They just transformed very fast because of the poison society that we live in, and they fell in, they fell in line with their, uh, their twisted, demented mentality and acceptance of the fallaway mind, Okay. So they just sped up with being a, uh, what do you call that? A deficient source of success in the society based on the mindset. All right. I'm talking about the majority, not all of you. If the shoe fit, then that's your problem, not mine. If it don't fit, well, shut your mouth. So therefore, his effects is different from her. Her tattoos mean something else different than him. Women's beauty is very vital and important to a man. Okay? A man, when he marks up his body, his body is pretty much already marked up as it is. He's hairy. Some of them got hairy chests. They got hairy arms. They look like a little a beast or something like that or a living monkey. That's just what men have always been. Just scruffy, heavy beard, bald head. That's just men. Okay? But most on the general basis, even psychologically, women aren't all the time going to be visual. Sometimes going to be about how that man makes her feel and what he can provide in her world. So therefore, his body usually isn't going to be the prize and joy. It's not going to be his goal in life. And it's not going to be like a canvas that has to remain uh, polished and clean. Even though he's going to groom himself, he's going to smell like cologne. He's going to take care of himself. He's going to have a nice haircut, depending on his situation. All right. But it wasn't and it isn't like the highest requirement for dating or relationships. But for a woman, it's totally different. Her body is like a, what do you call, how can I put it? When I was, when I was 16, I considered a woman's body to be a sanctuary. And I can actually say to a degree, it's still that way today. And the sanctuary should not be desecrated. It should not be, uh, violated to any degree you don't go to the sanctuary and you spray paint the white walls you don't go to the sanctuary and you start breaking the porcelain pillars 
You don't go to the sanctuary and you're drinking beer and you throw it down on the floor and you got all this trash shitting around the sanctuary. The sanctuary is clean. The sanctuary is supposed to be a place of comfort, of peace, and of what is the word? What's the word? Come on, classroom. Beauty. Not marked up with tattoos. Not diminished, devalued, and uh, violated by emotions by destruction all it does is devalue the property it's almost like a beautiful brand new home that a man wants to make his own almost rhymed there didn't it a beautiful brand new home that a man wants to make his own <laughs> sounds pretty nice don't it that he wants to keep that he wants to build a family within that he wants to live in that he wants to slide in and live for the remainder of his life so the better condition this house is in, no graffitis on the outside, the grass is cut, hello. Yes, I said it, the grass is cut. <laughs> the chimney is cleaned out, <laughs> okay? There's no gutter backed up system, there's no bad basement. There's no leakage in the basement in areas where it's not supposed to be. Then the house is gonna have some value. But the more damage this house has, the more devalued it is, the more violated it is, the more of a, well, let's just put it out there, the more of a trash heap it can become. And then it's no longer an inhabitable place. It's no, lo it's no longer worth the residency of anyone, who, if anyone who wants to own this house or purchase it. As a, you, know what the, well, you do know what the owner would do? The owner will bring the price down. Your realtor will give you a deal. They'll say, well, you know, it was 179000 now because of graffiti, bad neighborhood. Here we go. Listen, because she puts herself in bad situations to mark up herself to be a tattoo artist by being a canvas for a tattoo artist, drinking, smoking, playing, donkey dunking with the tattoo artist and other people who want to dope her up. OK, because this house is in a vandalized neighborhood or a neighborhood that vandalizes every property that is here. The windows are always busted in. There's no security over here because she opens up the door to practically everybody. So they come in and tear up. They come in and tear up and distort her body and herself. Guess what? Well, I can't sell it for that much anymore. Then uh, give it about two or three years. Now it's about $90,000 to about 50000 And it just continues to dwindle lower than that. And you know what? Check this out. In order for you, and we know this as a businessman, I'm very familiar with this. In order for this house to gain more value, you got to start doing some renovation. You got to start, listen, you got to remodel this house, that means get rid of the tattoos, change yourself up, go to the gym, start working out, put the ho hos and the Twinkies down, start eating vegetables, eating organic food and drinking the right type of water instead of pop Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Right. That is the only way to start bringing value back onto this property that uh, supposed to be a holy, clean and virtuous sanctuary. The man's body is a sanctuary of his own, but it's a different dimension and a different dynamic than the woman's body altogether. Because in the past and even today, even though we are ignorant or purposely ignorant to it, okay, her body is still a sanctuary and should not ever be violated. If the doors are locked, you just can't come in. And she shouldn't violate it herself. But we accept it any way it goes because that dumb man, or shall I say, the uneducated, de evolved, blue pill, beta, don't comprehend the value points. Don't comprehend himself. Don't understand his own directive as a man. So therefore, he still thinks, well, I have no means to say anything about her because I marked up myself. So I did add a little bit of the donkey dunk with that, and I can just expand on it a little bit longer, but I'm going to talk about the future consequences. Okay. So yes, we talked about the value points of her donkey dunking and being around everybody and, and uh, smoking, doping and, and roping with her 
dealers and those who are around her and her so-called friends, which is just men who are just in line waiting to be with her. You know, she might as well just be in the back room and have this long line of men waiting for their turn. OK, to uh, to warp her out over a long extended period of years. You know, it's kind of amazing and I'm not going to get into it, but it's kind of amazing that a lot of these girls do that by their in their career. They're working and say, oh, I don't need a man. But yeah, they got a long line outside of men who just coming in for 30 minutes, an hour of time where they might be, you know, in the back of the bus, in the back of their uh, cubicle or at home or 11 o'clock when nobody else knows about it. All the while she's saying, I don't need a man. I can do it all about myself. I'm independent. But yet she still needs her donkey dump. Right. She still needs the banana. I don't need a man, but I still need a banana. Well, I got feelings. I still need my womanhood taken care of. No, you said you don't need a man. No, I'm a, what she means to say is, this is what she means to say. I am not going, listen, I am not going to be virtuous. I'm not going to be content. I am not going to be loyal. I am not going to be honorable to one man just yet until I get ready. That's what she really means to say. Break it all down in uh, logical form. Get rid of all the BS and the excuses. That's what she means to say. And she shows you that in your everyday after she's a certain age and after her river has ran dry and her bridges are broken. Then at that, by that time, she's in her late 30s to her early 40s talking about, I need a husband. After already, listen, after already giving her husband's cookies, wines, parties, and gifts to men who was unworthy of her sanctuary. And now she wants to say, well, let me now give the leftover qualities to this blue pill beta who's dumb enough to say, well, I got a long track record. She got a long track record. So I guess we are even. Right. Right. That's the guy who don't know himself. This is the individual who's going to find himself in divorce court after two years of being with this girl. I told you before, and I'm going to tell you again. One of the main reasons why there was some men who, uh, as you think and as you claim in your belief system, that the biblical text was written by men. Okay about some of the gospels and the inspirations of their gesture to clown. Okay. That men in that time knew themselves. That's the fact men knew themselves. They knew consequences and they concentrated on the morals of the society. You got me. They knew that there was a difference between himself and the female. And before and a little bit after that time, there was, and still is a certain thing as polygyny and polygamy. Men can do that because their rope is a little longer. That's right. When you know, listen, when you know the not the knowledge, the science and the nature of the homo sapien or the species altogether, you know, its capabilities. There are exceptions to the rules. There's always exceptions to the rules, no matter where you are in your state, your town and your country. There's going to be other people who can do what you can do, probably even better and is capable. OK. But there is still scientifically in a higher percentage, a different acceptance of men doing it versus women who do that. Women usually have a shorter rope because of their emotional capacity. Because their body can only contain so much DNA. You got me? Even nature tells you that when she can only bear a child for nine months or at least one child, if not twins or triplets. But still, it's that period of time. Nature tells you that there's a reason why she has a 28 day period because she's different and she has a shorter rope, a shorter capacity to do what men are able to do. So there were other countries, there were other times and there were other real men, OK, that stood by polygyny and polygamy. It did not only help his manhood, it helped his kingdom and it helped his life and he got things done. 
Okay. We just don't fathom that because we are a dumbed down disadvantaged generation today. So we don't, we can't wrap our heads around that because we allow ourselves to line up to a monogamous, single, simple, weak, powerless, passive, soft handed, moist angel food cake lifestyle. Because you're not alpha, you're not masculine, you're just a simple, common, dumbed down man. Yeah, I said it. I'm not scared of you, and I don't give a. If you don't like it, get the hell out of my academy. Because I know myself. That's the one thing about me as being Morpheus. I know myself. I know history and I know my capabilities. And I'm not going to let you or somebody else or the society, the engineering, the social engineering, dumb me down. I kept my mind open and available and aware of what was going on ever since I was a little boy. It was never stupid for it. Even though I made failures. Yes, I fumbled. Yes, I got emotional myself. But you know what? I knew something was wrong. Why is everybody thinking this way? Why do everybody believe this certain way? Why is everyone acting this way? And then I watch a movie like, uh, <laughs> what was that movie? The Mummy. I think it was The Mummy 1, 2, 3, and 4. I watched all of them. I liked them. And I saw A Knox in the Moon. And I can't think of what the other girl's name was, but A Knox in the Moon and the other girl. And I'm thinking both of them are cute. Why don't you just take both of them? <laughs> like, what? Why you got to have one of them? He's like, oh, man, this is the... And, and here come a blue pill brother of mine. Oh, man, you can't do that. You can only have one. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, why? Who said? Are you God? Is God talking to you about how many you can have and what you can't have? Right? But I'm not going to get into that right now. But basically what I'm saying is... There are th because, listen, the man's rope is a little longer. His capabilities is a lot more expended than that of the common average woman. And he's not full of an emotional capacity. He doesn't have the chemistry that the woman has. So it's going to affect him differently. And he still have the ability to comply or apply himself to in his environment should he need to based on his capabilities and depending on his own uh, how he knows himself. Women can't do that, but they try. And as a matter of fact, they do it practically all the time. And you don't know because you're her husband. She's with another husband that's somewhere else. Just not labeled husband. But she, he's bouncing on her no different than you are. And she'll never let you know until she starts changing. You know how she changes? By the way she treats you over your in your relationship. One day the sun is shining and the next day the sun has just disappeared on you. Like, what happened? What the hell happened? Then there's some funny business going on. The other day is going to be sunny again. It's going to be some rain. It's going to be some winter. It's going to be like, what the hell is going on? What's going on with this woman? She's acting funny. She's acting secretive. She don't want to do this no more. She start chopping her hair. She start marking her body up. You're like, wait a minute. This isn't Susie that I thought she used to be. No, because Susie's doing something that you don't agree with, but you don't want to you don't want to see it. You don't want to know about it. Because you're blue pill. Okay? Because your childish, unlearned self decided to say, I'm gonna get married and be stuck and miserable for 15 years. See, and I don't have it like this, but if I had the choice, if I had the money, when it comes to automobiles. I probably, I might be like Jay Leno. I know I would. You know, I'm, I know I might have a, uh, I might have a backyard full of uh, exotics, sports cars, classic cars. You know, there, there, there are plenty of beauties out there to drive. You understand? There is so much to be had in the universe. Leathers smell good. Different, um, different axle lifts. Different uh, technology that's implemented. Even though I hate technology, just different kinds. For the sake of the automobile and many of the cars that I never had the chance or the time or the money to drive. Okay? Because I understand over a certain part of a certain amount of years, this one car is gonna go bad. This one car is gonna be dilapidated or it's just not gonna feel new like it used to. So if I have something else to hop in, I'm gonna hop in that for a little while. Give myself a reprieve or 
uh, uh, some ventilation. Then I'm going to get back to my original car and I might appreciate it more. Like, oh, I miss driving this thing. I like this car. I'm never going to give it up. Then I start loving it even more because it has, here we go, sentimental value. But the problem is this, and I spoke about this before, and I really don't want to continue this too long because it's going to destroy the the, uh, the time that I'm trying to actually reach here. Okay? But I can be content. If the, if the opportunity was presented and I had this woman who was virtuous, moralistic, mindset, intelligent, blah, blah, cute, young, available, big eyes, that great stuff. Okay, the list is just too long. I'm not even going to talk about it. If she was the applicable, adequate girl that I need her to be, I can find myself being sensible and virtue or shall I say honorable by this girl. I can find myself doing that real easy, even though I am accustomed and even though I could be a man of polygamy or polygyny. You got me? But here's the problem that you men don't understand. And we're going to talk about it right now. And I'm going to be raw and a cut with you like I all am. Listen, I give you this drink called, this is called a, a 151, right? Proof. You take it or you leave it. If you drink it, you're a man. All right. You choke on it. You <laughs> <laughs> Woo, man. Oh, get out get the hell out of my face you a child suck it up or leave it okay the problem is y'all accept the lowest hanging fruit you accept anything you think well because she has 50 life partners that she's been with and I got 50 life partners we are the same you are a dummy because her rope is shorter than yours. By the time you get married to this woman, she's going to give you nothing but a good year and a half. And then she start talking to you, baiting and switching, talking about, oh, I really don't want to do it anymore. Or I'm bored or I don't want to experience. You're like, baby, uh, uh, let's uh, let's try different positions. Um, have you tried the back door before? Um, you need to start uh, succeeding a little bit more. How about we do cosplay? Um, have you thought about uh, pretending like you or somebody else? Uh, let's do this. Let's do that. She's like, no, I don't. No, I don't want to do it. I'm gonna sleep on a couch tonight. Oh, I'm on my time in a month, the whole month, and you can't figure it out why. Because listen, she has no juice left over. Her rope is short. Her rope is short. Men in the older days before us dummies today knew that the younger, the better, the fertile, the better. As soon as she signed up for college, that's it. That's her. Go get her. There she go. Because the less that she has on her speedometer, the less she is driven around town, the more you have to enjoy this girl. The more her wheels going to have meat on it the more her powertrain is going to have power the more the spark plugs are going to spark as it should hell the well gotta hold myself back hello <laughs> okay the more this paint job is fresh straight off of the manufacturer lot they just built the car they getting ready to put the car on the 18 wheeler they call it the car hauler Okay, the moment they get ready to pull on the car hard, oh, that's mine right there. I want that one. Yeah, I brought it. Still got the little sticker on the side of it. The steering wheel got the plastic on it and the seat. Listen, you know, common sense say, oh, we got time with this. I can try to break it in as much as I want to. It's going to take a couple of years to break it in. It's going to take at least five to six years or, or seven years to break this car in. No, no metal shaves in the transmission or the engine, right? You are good to go. Now, listen, I know what you're thinking. Oh, this girl has to be young. Morpheus, you are a pervert. You're a pedophile. You're talking about girls who are barely 18 and night. No, 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 no. You're a child. Watch your mouth and shut up. Okay, because you're uneducated. You will think like that. 
I'm your professor here. Sit down and learn something today. If you don't want to, find somebody else because I won't deal with your dumbology. In the old days, it wasn't about how young you was. It's about the virtue that you had. It's about your lack of putting yourself in bad situations, marking your body up and opening up your doors to every Jack, Billy and Joe. That's what it's about. You can have value when you're 32. You can have value when you're 27. You can even have value if you're somewhere around 37 and 38. But you know what? The girls can't wait. They're getting popped left and right by the time they're 25 years old. By the time they're 25 years old, they've already been around the country several times. And as a matter of fact, they're probably even married at that time. So the mileage is already above 129,000 on speedometer and the car is barely even brand new. For a man, listen, for a man who's 25 years old, he's just now beginning. It don't matter how many times he's driven around. Let me tell you the difference between a man and a woman. All right. A diesel truck. I can tell you this by facts as a, as a mechanic and getting underneath it myself. All right. 200,000 miles or 300,000 miles is just breaking in the diesel truck engine. It's just breaking it in. You don't even you don't even know the full power of the capacity of this diesel engine and all its quirks and its features, okay, until that thing has mileage on it. 100,000 miles or 200,000 miles is pretty much nothing on a diesel engine. That's what a man's life is. That's why the older he gets, the finer he is. He's like fine wine. He gets better. The common woman, on an average basis, the majority of them, they're like a regular gasoline automobile engine. Okay? 300,000 miles is too much. 200,000 miles, you'll find it in a buy here, play here place. You got me? So therefore, when you're trying to peer bond with this girl or you say, well, she's 32 years old, I'm 32, I'm going to be a dummy to say, well, we're both the same. You're an idiot because you're signing up for something that's going to be a dead end eventually because it's not brand new. It's drum roll. Oh, duh. It's wore out. Because grandma and mommy did not tell the girl that she needed to stay in her place. And what I mean by stay in her place is maintain the virtue and value of her sanctuary. Don't go out there flipping back and forth for social media. Don't be pulling up and pulling down your garment just because you want a dollar bill. Don't be trying to prove that you got breast to anybody online or personally just because you want their approval to validate your womanhood because your daddy didn't do it because he was never there in your life. I've even spoken about that in one of my audios that it is men that validates a woman's womanhood when she is a daughter or a child. He validates it. He's the one that say, oh, baby, you look cute. You don't have to dress wear like that when you leave the house. Uh, you know, pull up your brassiere. You don't need that tight pants on. Don't don't act like this. Don't act like that and do this. And he's the man in her life because he's the father. And she feels confident, she feels secure, and she's also going to honor her father. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So he eventually validates this girl's womanhood over time. When there's no fatherhood in her life, she needs validation from everybody else. Not only is it called a form of being a narcissist, it's a form of being insecure. She's insecure. So she's willing to tattoo herself up. She's willing to give herself to every other uh, wolf or Roth the dog. Okay, to get that validation, even if that means putting too many miles on her speedometer, on her techometer. So it's different than the guy. And then you come along, your diesel engine, you still got several thousand miles to go and she's tired. She can't go any further. And eventually she's going to break down with high viscosity. She's going to break down. She's going to have oil leaks. She's going to have attitude. She's going to have deficient days. She's not going to be able to consume 
the fuel properly as she normally used to do. You know how this happens? The older the car is, the more raggedy it is. Now you need to put more fuel in it. It's no longer fuel efficient. It's no longer fuel efficient because it's old now. There's warpage everywhere. There's computer dysfunction and malfunctions everywhere. So you end up spending more money, buddy. That's why she gets bored. She's going to say, I'm bored and I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I want someone else to drive me. And where are you at in the end? Left sitting there looking stupid because you're like, oh, well, she got tattoos and she got like 200 miles on the uh, 200,000 miles on the techometer. I guess it's okay. Yeah. And we are at a very extremely high divorce rate. Nobody wants to get married anymore. Nobody trusts any, anybody anymore. And women want to be men. Some men want to be women. And we are confused. Because we don't know the differences. Nature tells you that in your face. What really pisses me off? What really, really gets me going? And I'm a professor myself. Or at least your pretend professor here. Okay? So I can say that. <laughs> You're in, you're in academy right now. You're listening to the academy. Okay. You are willing to get your frail, funny looking self up in the morning and go to a school to get some type of education, right? To study or who knows what the hell you study. Okay. To try to defeat and destroy nature. But nature is the most simplest, most organic, most God given. If there's a such thing as God, it will be nature. The most God-giving evidence of intelligence and life, and we can't even focus on that. There's a difference between a tree, okay, and a bush. <laughs> even though they're both green, even if they're both seated in the ground and they both somewhat have a trunk, there's a difference. There's a difference. You can create a swinging uh, a swing for a child on a tree. You can't do that on a bush. Try it. You're going to be the most dumbest person on the block and people are going to look at you like you're, you're strange and you are for thinking that way. There's a difference between a diesel truck and a car. There's a big difference. OK, there are things that the diesel truck can do that the car cannot do. Go ahead and haul one of those huge 56 foot trailers with your car. Go ahead and try it. The mechanics are going to be waiting for you and the car dealership's going to say they're getting ready to f they stuff up. And we're going to make money off of this blue pill idiot. The thing is about men in the old days, they stood up for their nature and themselves. They didn't mind having an open polygamy or polygynous relationship, regardless of what your priest, your pastor and your pimps told you what to do and not to do. They had a loyal society and they thought differently than what these soft handed, soft glove children think today. Y'all sign up to be a diminished, de-evolved species. You sign up for it because you're emotional, not logical. And you know what? I don't think we're ever going to change. I don't think it's going to change till things get worse. Till every man finds his frawny, scunny, frail self in the court system. Okay are getting pinned for child support. Okay? I don't think we're ever going to change until we realize that we need to start loving ourselves. You may need to start loving yourself. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to end this audio just on that specifically. Morpheus loves himself. I love myself to reach high. Even if I can't get it, I'm still going to reach high. I love myself to say, you know what? I need to protect my manhood. If I'm going to get married which I'm never, if I'm going to be in a long-term relationship, probably never that, okay? If I am, if it was possible for it to happen, I'm going to choose high, high up. I am not going to be with somebody with high mileage. I'm not going to waste my time with someone who's going to tell me who I am or going to control my life or is going to try to, well, I'll fit you on my schedule, but no, -uh. no, no, no. Don't work like that. Not over here with Morpheus. Get it right, Okay. Or don't come at all. I got options. You understand? I'm a man of means and I make choices 
of my own, not because of what you think, not because of what you feel or what your church or your engineered indoctrinated programmed society wants you to think. OK, I am not concerned about it. And I'm aware of the situation. But there are too many men who are not. Y'all still go out there and say, well, I want to have a child. I just want to pass on my genes. I just think that's the godly thing to do. Who told you what the godly thing to do? Who, who's, who's God? Who told you this? Who's telling you this nonsense but some other human being? And I told you this in another audio. I've explained this to you. How are you going to sit here and accept the idea of a God from another human being's perspective? The only way you can really know and, and comprehend the essence and the realness of a God is if a God is speaking to you about another God itself. And only a mechanic can tell you about a mechanic on a general basis. Only somebody who is a, a ballet dancer can tell you about another ballet dancer because they're a ballet dancer themselves. They can give you the schematic. They can tell you how it works and what the expectation is. Not somebody who never been in the ballet arena, nor have the flats or the tights or never been in there swinging around and, and acting like a, 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 a flamingo or some damn bird. They can't tell you that. An average anthropomorphic species that never been to heaven and probably probably did come from hell, but <laughs> never been to hell going to tell you about a superior creature or an entity that's greater than itself. What a joke. How are you going to talk about something greater than you unless you are that species itself? But you know how they convince you by saying, I am inspired by God. That's what I want you to believe. And we're dumb enough to say, oh, here we go. We're off the dog. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> okay. I guess you're right. Okay. <gasps> because you call yourself doctor. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then we listen. You know what the results is? We find ourselves here in the 2020s, a very retard, dumbed down human race. And we still don't understand why, because you accept it. We wake up in the morning and we work to be ignorant. We work to fail. We work not to concentrate on the facts of life. We work at it. And you know what? We have been successful. We're so successful where we don't have a good family anymore. We're so successful that the American dream is called a dumb phone in your hand and a false misconception of reality called illusion. That's what we do. That's our, that's our evolution right there and a computer chip under our skin called GMOs and other stuff that you stick under your skin that I'm not going to talk about because that's our goal. It's a fascinating thing. If men knew themselves and women had long vision, we would not have the decrepit, broken ideology that we have in the current nation today. We wouldn't have a high divorce rate. We wouldn't have a high, uh, what do you call that, broken relationship dynamic. We would not be dealing in a time where um, you got to live a hidden polygamous or polygyny of a lifestyle. We wouldn't have that issue if we was adults like we are supposed to be today but because we are old we are so deceptive in ourselves because we're so interested in a comfortable weak lackadaisical lifestyle that everything goes and everything that's corrupt and crooked is accepted and validated we don't want to do anything that we know we're supposed to do to advance ourselves and our species for the next generation by teaching and be making awareness known to the generations that are currently available. The more we talk about it, the more we swing this pickaxe, this pickaxe at this large boulder, eventually the crumbs will fall. Eventually it will break. Eventually we will start changing the, dy the dynamics of our ignorance. The more men get a chance to understand that he is the prize, that you are the prize, man. Aim high, not low. 
pay attention to what you're paying attention to. Listen to what you're listening to. Watch what you're damn watching. Then maybe we can, be, we can get on the right foot and the right horse. The problem is, and I'm going to get off this audio. I know I said that a couple of minutes ago. The problem is, here's the, here's the thing. Old-fashioned human curiosity. That's what's destroying the average human. Curiosity. Curious about every damn thing that's destructive. If somebody tell you, don't jump over that bridge, then dumb, don't jump over the bridge. To bleep that out. You need to think about it. You creep over this. But then, no, uh, wait, uh, maybe I'm not going to do this because uh, uh, I need to take a, a word of warning here. You, you, you will be surprised at the sound of my voice, Neo. As Morpheus and as I speak to people and uh, <laughs> fly around with my uh, black coat on, you will be surprised how many people think they know something, but it's completely ignorant to their action. What that means is it don't matter how much knowledge people gain. It don't matter how smart we think we are with our dumb phones. We are still a de-evolved species. We are still lackadaisical and ineffective towards our environment because we're not speaking through action. Years ago, people stood for something. Now we stand for nothing. They've been taking away laws, changing laws, putting restrictions. You can't do this. You can't go there. You can't talk this way. Took prayers out of school. Don't let me go there. Change the paddling situation. Certain mandates on your jobs in certain areas. And now you're living in a plastic bubble. Because we didn't stand up for nothing. If you don't stand for nothing, you'll fall for any damn thing. And that's what we do. Fall for any stupid thing. Because it's emotionalized. You got to know that there is a difference. There is a difference between being acknowledgeable and just being so damn dumb. If you're looking forward to a future... Understand the species that you are dealing with and the situation. Evaluate it first by nature, and then maybe you have a better idea. And I understand some of you women are listening to this as well, but it's specifically for hardhead men who don't comprehend. Oh, you know, Morpheus, you just full of BS. You don't know what you're talking because you ain't married. You ain't got no girlfriend. You ain't got no kids. You, blah, 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 blah. you ain't been around. No, 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 no. Go ahead and keep going. Go down that train track and go ahead and see it for yourself. Because the thing is, when you go down that train track, you're not going to return. That's the idea of knowledge and me being your professor and red pill providers is telling you, look out and look up, look ahead. Watch out, because when you get down there, it's too bad. It's too late. It's too late when you are down and out and your face is on the ground. There's no returning from that. You're going to have to pull yourself up. There is a return, but you're not going to be the same man. You're not going to be the same. Man. That's the same thing I talk about with church. I'm about. oh, I met gesture. I met Jesus. I met Jesus at the cross. No, 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 no. You just had a life threatening situation and you woke up because you was dumb enough to make that mistake anyway, instead of listening to word of warning. And now all of a sudden you want to talk about you want to be a Christian and you met Jesus. No, you met common sense and common sense popped you on the back of the head because that was the only thing to turn on your antenna called instincts or at least thinking Once we understand and respect our nature, once we understand and respect how things operate by the universe, not by your dumb books that they put in your face while you're in front of your so-called indoctrinated Agent Smiths in your school, then maybe we can be on the right track. Maybe we can have a more better sensible society and a different changed humanity. But until then, we're going to constantly be this transformed species called a human being, but we de-evalued. We're below that than what we used to be because now we're dependent on everything but our human powers and human senses because we're smart. I 
I got another audio for you and I do my just diligence from by delivering this hot fiery red pill as I usually do. This is my life go to awaken you this way and give you the wow effect. So do your just diligence and pass on the wow effect by liking this. Continue to share and subscribe and let us continue to awaken the minds of these robotic transhumanist thinking individuals today.